Live. The counter offer. <laughs> counter offer. Two articles he doesn't know bring up. Two articles that I don't know that he's going to bring up. All real estate related. We're going to tie it back to how it affects your life and kind of debunking all these titles. These right. titles are just the news out of you want to hear. Yeah, these t these titles how do you want to hear? are just so clickbaity. Let's start with what's your clickbait article? Here we go. I got two very good clickbaities. Start it up. There are only four major U.S. metro cities where it's cheaper to buy a home than rent. Hmm. Sounds interesting, huh? Well, they had actually a very nice graph by Redfin. Buying is more affordable in these four major city cities. Detroit, Philadelphia, Cleveland, and ironically, Houston. Those are the only ones. Huh. So the according dumps. to that. Yeah. The largest... What was the third one? Houston. No. That was the last one. Yeah. Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. Right, right. The yeah. largest home ownership premium is in the Bay Area, where it's twice as expensive to buy than it is to rent. Very interesting. Wow. Yep. Nationally, in the, the Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah. Nationally. You know they used to have the highest rents. They should still, roughly. Even there into Oakland. Nationally, the typical home cost is an estimated 25% more per month to own than rent. And that sounds interesting. And why is that the case? The last bullet point I have, you look very excited for this news article, a drop in mortgage rates would cause the home ownership premium to shrink. Go figure. That is literally should be the headline. Right. Say that one more time. If rates fell to 5%, right. the typical home buying purchase would cost an estimated 10% more than renting and not 25% more than renting. So what they're saying is because of the rates, it's more expensive to buy than it is to rent. And these are the only four cities that it's more affordable. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that uh, chart. It is at, I think it's 1500 uh, nationwide to rent and 2700 per month to buy. Well, yeah. So this and says 25%. It's the highest ever. And it's something that's got the, 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 the clause underneath the chart is something's got to give well ironically enough is i still think especially in new york city that and they showed new york city and we were about 50 percent so in other words that's on average in new york city that's not manhattan but if you're looking in a place like the east village the west village tribeca upper west side gramercy you are not going to be doing anything but probably paying roughly the same amount for rent as you would to buy I agree. That's without a doubt. But yeah. if you take the holistic of LA, not Beverly Hills and the prime areas. No, I think that's exactly it, yeah. right. New York is one of the only places where uh, buy is exceeding rent. You should actually purchase if you're planning on being long term. I think that is the reason why is that people are willing to bid up these rents because they think of New York as more of like a flexibility. They don't know if they're going to be here for very long. They aren't required to come into the office yet, or they do, and they don't know if they're going to, you know, move to the suburbs in a few years. Yeah. So that's kind of where New York, you're paying for the flexibility, and that's why the rents are so high. And you can find very low maintenance, very low... Uh, deals. Yeah, deals. You can just find deals. Yeah. Get the good purchase price. You're probably paying less than you would in rent. A hundred percent. Like, and that's the funny thing is, Imagine re, uh, refinancing in two years or three years or whenever it goes down, and now you're paying way less, and then you could easily rent it out and make some money on it, and then the cost, or I'm sorry, the price goes up. It just makes sense. In the right areas to buy a place instead of rent, that's my article. Yeah. Well, Amazing article. Uh, One way to start. Yeah. That's no, the best I mean, way you to know, start. You know what? That brings me to this article. Mixed-use real estate percolates in New York. Uh, multifamily is on a rebound from a decline. is now outperforming multifamily sales across the country. New York City saw 268 transactions involving 326 buildings in the first quarter of 2023. Combined value of $2.11 billion. Uh, the largest transaction was in Brooklyn, 137 North 10th Street and 44 Berry Street, selling for $68 uh, million. Wow. So demand for retail space is on the upswing. Wow. Would you believe that? Elon Musk said 
he disagrees. On retail? On commercial, in general. But retail, I of mean, course. I join yeah. the crowd. They yeah. would say, It's easy you know, to get you, bearish. You, you actually have to sift Someone's through gonna buy all it. of these commercial... Uh, we talked about bits. it last month, is that the big boxes are not buying, so the family, well, the wealthy families are buying it instead of the big funds. Well, they're doing these commercial deals. When the, you know what they're doing? They're grouping in any commercial. Yeah. Is office. Office. Yeah. Yeah. So this is surprised me for sure. The storefronts in Soho, Madison Avenue, and Third Avenue districts dipped to historic lows in Q1, but the average asking rents across all submarkets in New York City rose by 3.8 percent to twenty dollars a foot. That is the first average annual increase since Q1 2015, when it originally peaked. Wow. So retail rents peaked in 2015, and they just saw Eight the first- Eight years later. Yeah, <laughs> which, you know, that's a Makes typical sense. real estate cycle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I thought that Residential was pretty encouraging. Too. Yeah. Uh, you know, in New York City, there's going to be that demand for multifamily, for retail, mixed use, everything like that. At that, that time, so, everything was a peak. Thinking about that, just like the ideal building right now is, of course, good location, or you go to some sort of up and coming neighborhood, but you get a mixed use rental building with retail on the base. Yeah, mixed And as use. long as you get a good retail uh, tenant, you know, the rents are sky high. So. You, you walk around Soho or Broadway. It's mobbed with tourists. Then like, think about this. They are spending so much money in New York City, it's crazy. Then think about this. You buy that building, you get a good purchase price. Then uh, when the sales market is exceeding again and it makes more sense to buy, then you convert that rental building into condos. Yeah. Just like they did back in 20, 2008 to 2011. Yeah, they did that a lot. Good article, Eric, talking about uh, investors. So they said that, this is very interesting. So this is the title. U.S. real estate investors are losing money on one in seven homes that they sell. Among the worst since 2016. So this is the interesting thing. They lead with the negativity. But guess what? These investors <laughs> are, on average, losing 13.5% on their sales. Guess who these investors are? The big box shops. The ones who bought in bulk. These aren't regular investors because they went on to say in here, they're trying to dispel the myth. This is literally their words. They're trying to dispel the myth that buying and selling real estate is almost a guaranteed moneymaker. They're saying that's a myth, but the state, but the stats are still quite strongly in favor of investors. In other words, what they're saying is that big box lost 13.5, so these are the Black Rocks, 13.5% when they sell, if they're selling, or if they're trading it as in a package deal to someone else. But regular investors only lost 4%. So like you and I only lost 4%. And to be honest, if you hold on to it, I don't know how you're losing money in this market in a lot of these places. So really, these are the ones that their rate lock or I'm sorry, their, uh, their arm, their adjust, adjustable rate mortgage is due, their seven-year arm, their five-year arm or whatever, and they thought it was gonna continuously go up and now it's higher, so maybe it's they're selling at a loss because they just wanna get rid of it and stay higher rents. But it's very interesting because the comments were completely against, which I like, the article. 260 comments on it wow. saying that regular real estate investors, it's still an amazing time to do it. What they're trying to do is tell you and I, not to buy as an investment. They're trying to dispel the myth that you can make money on it. It's an amazing time to get invested in places like Nashville or Charlotte, you know, these sub markets. I know we talked about your favorite place, Tampa Bay and Jacksonville. And Where is that? <laughs> but all these places, at the right price, it makes sense. If you're purchasing Soho, it's a little bit different than if you're, you know, going across to Albany or something like that. So. I thought it was a very interesting article that they're trying to lead that investors are losing when it's big, big box shop are losing. That's what it comes down to. That's my rant. Yeah, that was a rant. Uh, you can take a loss as a big box, like you were calling it, and write it off. 
but the adjustables come in, they had record low mortgage rates on it, and then they pass it on to somebody else. So the new mortgage rate being up from the current investor or the person who's buying has to be made up for. So it's being made up for in the price. So yeah. I'd actually say that 13 and a half or whatever it was is pretty low. Yeah. Uh, could be more. Could be more. <laughs> so I would say that's not even that bad. Uh, on the final article. Yes, the final article, probably the best one that we had so far. Get ready. Debatable. Sponsor sales spur peak week for Manhattan luxury. Contracts for homes asking $4 million beat the 10-year average in a week before Memorial Day. So if you're rich and you are looking to buy in Manhattan, you go, what you went out, you bought an apartment, you bought one for over $4 million, you got a fantastic deal, you're feeling great, and then you probably went out to the Hamptons and celebrated in uh, Memorial Day weekend. Did you do that? Did you do that? I hope you did, because that shows the 10-year average to buy a $4 million plus luxury home. There's a lot of people out there doing that. The above We just average. met with one. Yep, exactly. So They liked the building so much that they bought another one in the building downtown. Yeah, a three Maybe million even... dollar place to six or seven. Yeah. Maybe they didn't even go out. Yeah. Maybe they didn't go out to the Hamptons. They walked into their nice, new, fresh apartment straight off the sponsor, smelling brand new, and they said, Wow. So nice to build. What it. a nice feeling. Yeah. I don't have to worry about a thing. Living on like a king in New York City. Yeah. So yeah. it's an amazing Makes me want to be that person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the news for the week. If you guys have any any questions, leave it in the comments below. Uh, we're going to be coming live every single Wednesday talking about four articles, dispelling the myths between the title and the article. And they then, know. We've I, done 21, art, 21 of these. What I like is the comments. When they're open, I love reading the comments. You yeah. know, one of them was on <laughs> y Yahoo and just the difference between New York Times, Yahoo, and you know real deal it's just so all over the place it's really funny to watch but have a great week don't get cuss, caught into the comments yeah yeah put a time limit on that <laughs> yeah, put exactly a time limit on exactly that. <laughs>